Dr. Paul Mason, sports and exercise physician, Sydney, a leading expert on protein for bone health, interviewed by Dr. Sean Baker. But we know that for athletes, and where if you have insufficient circulating energy available, then your body's baseline physiological functions, like maintaining bone health, are impaired. So if you don't have enough available energy, your body will sort of let certain things slide. And we make the assumption, we say, oh, you know, traditionally in sports medicine, we say, oh, well, you've got this relative energy or red S, um, we need to push more energy into you. But we need to have a look at the source of energy because if you have carbohydrates coming in, that releases insulin and that has the effect of storing energy. And while you might be in positive energy balance as far as what's coming in, you don't have energy availabilities. We measure resting energy metabolism. And when that goes too low, we know these athletes are at risk of stress fracture. So how do we increase resting energy metabolism? Put them on a ketogenic diet. And then we come to protein. And we have a look at this study that was done in 2002. I think it was by Dawson and Hughes. And they actually did a randomized control trial looking at what happened when you supplemented with vitamin D and calcium citrate. And over three years, they had a population, the study population was males and females over the age of 65. So postmenopausal females, old men. And they assessed their bone mineral density with DEXA scanning, gold standard, over three years. And they found that in the group with the lowest protein intake, who were supplemented with vitamin D and calcium, their bone mineral density continued to decline. But in the group with the highest protein intake, they actually had reversal. They had increase in bone mineral density. So this demonstrates that just through nutritional intervention alone, it is possible to reverse osteopenia and osteoporosis without any pharmacological agents, without bisphosphonates, without these other, these other things going on. And this makes perfect sense because 40% of the dry weight of bone is protein. So if you think about bone, bone is basically a, a scaffold of protein, which has got, you know, calcium and phosphate and minerals embedded within it. If you have carbs coming in, that releases insulin. That stores energy. You don't have energy availability. In a randomized control trial, in the group with the highest protein intake, they had an increase in bone mineral density. Through nutrition alone, it is possible to reverse osteopenia and osteoporosis. Adults should eat 1.2 grams to 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of ideal body weight. Adult athletes should eat 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein. Older adults should try to eat at least two boluses of 50 grams of protein each. 68 kilograms is approximately 150 pounds. 91 kilograms is approximately 200 pounds.